Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rising Stories Podcast. My goal with this podcast is to empower you, the listener, with interviews featuring powerful women in business, authors, and women of all walks of life. So I'm so glad you are here and spending this time with us. I just found out this week that I am now on Spotify and Overcast.fm. So if you are a new listener, welcome, and I hope you enjoy this show. The new year is approaching fast, next week in fact, so we don't have a whole lot of time, but I wanted to stop and tell you about what goes on in my world during this time of year. Every year, I challenge my clients to reflect upon the year and find their focus for the new year. I will share a little bit about what I tell them with you today. Also, I'm going to tell you about what makes my year move forward and that one word that makes it all come together for me every year. And if you want to hear more about how I go about doing all of this, make sure you are following me on my Instagram stories and sign up for my newsletter with the link in the description below. I will be sharing more about all things good and wise this year. But before we begin, I want to make sure you know about a very important need. The Kumi Project in the Wakiso District of Uganda is in need of some monetary help. The Kumi Project collaborates with local leaders to help transform and empower the lives of vulnerable boys and young men. The Ugandan volunteer staff team actively works to meet the following needs. School fees, meals, housing, counseling, university opportunities, and vocational training. Their goal is just $5,000 before the end of 2017. That's just days away, but not too late to contribute. If we all give something, together our Rising Stories listeners can make a huge difference. Join me and help them reach this goal. I have added the link to donate in the description box below, and you can also find it at the Kumi Project, that's K-K-U-M-I project.org. Every donation counts, so don't hesitate to give. When business owners are reaching the end of their year, it's a rush. So many loose ends to tie up and things that need to be recorded. But what they fail to do is to take a good look at the year at a glance. We know how to look ahead, but we seldom look behind to see what we have done. Even if you are not a business owner, you should still take a good look at what your year looked like. I did it when I was a stay-at-home mom, and I do it now as a business owner. You cannot make your new year more functional and profitable if you don't know what worked and what didn't. Here are some questions to answer to help you do just that. Number one, where did you spend most of your time? Did you have a major project that took a lot of your time? Look at your calendar and find out. Did you spend a lot of time on one client? Was this year the year of medical appointments or things that just really took your time and attention away from your focus, away from life? Did major things happen? Were there deaths, illnesses? All that needs to be taken into account. Number two, what was missing? Did you not do something that you wanted to do with your time and talents? Where could you have fit that in in your life? You business owners, zero in on what one thing is missing from your success. Is it lack of funds? Is it lack of time? What is that missing piece that you believe could catapult you into the next level of your business? You need to define it, stop and define it, Look, looking back, making sure that you're looking through the the year in review, take even month by month or day by day, week by week, and review your 2017, your previous year, to be able to focus and say, you know, I could have done this if I'd had that. So define it right now, what was missing. Number three, and here's an important one, what was stinking awesome last year? Where did you feel overjoyed? and proud of yourself and your accomplishments. Maybe it was something that one of your family members did as a result of a change that you made. Name that 
name it, highlight it, write it down somewhere, appreciate it. This is the time to write down some major accomplishments. And when I say major, they're major in your life, not in anyone else's life, not in anyone else's view, but in your view, what do you think was a major accomplishment? I remember one time when I was teaching my children to read, I taught them to read. They read through one book. It was a small book, but they read through it, and I wrote that down. That was a major accomplishment. So make sure that you are writing down your, uh, making a list of all of your accomplishments in the previous year. It's very important and very key to moving forward. So those are just some of the things that help me reflect and review and get ready for the next year. It also helps a lot of my clients who meet with me at the end of the year. We do a year in reflection and a year in review. Um, And then we start the year fresh knowing what has happened, what didn't happen, what needed to happen, what could have happened. And that helps us set goals for the next year and knowing full well what it is we want to accomplish. And even as a young mom, I looked forward and thought, you know, this is what I want to do for this next year. These are my goals. I want to teach my next child how to read. I want to um, save more money for a vacation. And it just helped me to look back and see what had happened and that my year was not for naught, which I hope that makes sense. But sometimes we go into the next year thinking, oh, I'm so glad for the next year. But the previous year had some major things and some great things. And we need to highlight those. We need to find out what's missing. And we need to find out where uh, we can put things in the next year to, again, make ourselves more functional and more profitable as business owners. Another thing that makes my new year move forward is that I am a part of a large movement and community called One Word 365. You can find them at oneword365.com or the Facebook group by the same name. I'll have those links in the show notes at kareensanderfer.com. You can also listen to the founder, Elise Ronzino, who was my guest here on episode number 38. So with the help of OneWord365.com, each year I choose a word that will stay with me throughout the year. You might wonder, how do you choose just one? And how do you know what that year entails to attach a word to it? Well, I spend lots of time thinking of the word, thinking of a word, to choose and I look ahead with my eyes wide open and what I mean by that is that I know I might know some of the things that are ahead of me some things that are coming maybe for you it's a move maybe it's a a new relationship or maybe it's um, a change in careers whatever it is uh, I think about those things for me while I'm choosing the word I also choose a word that maybe just jumps out at me Elise has some great tips on that site to help you choose your word. I also uh, choose a word or maybe two words and I think about uh, what the definitions are. So I look them up, I kind of mull them around for a couple of weeks, and sometimes it takes me longer than other years, but I always feel like I choose the right word for that year. I will say that my word last year came full circle for me in ways that I had not expected. My word last year was present. I thought, yes, I need to be present, not living in the past or in the future, but in the present. So boy, was I taken aback when something happened that was totally out of my my control and I needed to live in the present. I can't say that I did it all the time, but it was a constant reminder to live in the present. It was a tough year, and that word helped me hold it together in more ways than one. What I do also is I take my word, and I will either put it on a giving key. I don't know if you've seen those long keys that have, um, or necklaces that have a key at the end, and it has the word uh, inscripted in it. Um, engraved in it. That's what I'm trying to say. 
And so I use usually do that or I'll do a bracelet or I will put it on my vision board. Wherever, you know, you look at, whatever you look at each day, maybe you can put it as a reminder and it really does help. In the last few years, I've had words such as simple, intentional, action, present, and trust. So there are some sample words, I guess, that you can look at on the website at oneword365.com. So check those out. Um, You know, the word trust for me was a doozy, mostly because I developed the trust test that year, and it's still with me today. Whenever trouble came my way that year, I would do the trust test. I would ask myself, am I not trusting that all things will work out? Am I not trusting that God knows what he is doing here with me, with this situation, with this person? It gave me a huge 180 degree change in perspective each time I did the trust test because I was able to trust, which is putting it down, not picking it back up, but relying that there is going to be a an end to it or a completion or that it will all work out. So that was my trust test. For this new year, I have finally chosen my word. I will be sharing more about my word on my new newsletter and on my Instagram stories. So make sure you sign up to get my emails with the link in the show notes and the links provided below in the podcast. Join me and choose a word for this year. Let me know what that word is by tagging me on Twitter or on Instagram with the hashtag MyWordStory. I hope this year in review with Coach Kareen, me, was helpful. If it was, please spread the word about the podcast and share this episode with a friend. Maybe you can both choose a word together and keep each other focused throughout the year. If you have some specific goals you would like to accomplish this year, please consider hiring a life coach to help you move all of the obstacles aside to make your goals happen this year. The first strategy call is free with the link in the show notes. Please consider supporting Rising Stories podcast by purchasing books and products mentioned on the show with the links provided in the show notes. Thanks for listening and keep rising in your own story. 